All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is Sunday Site Visit 54, and today you will get a rare glimpse inside of the quote-unquote Queen's Chamber, otherwise known here as the Extraction Chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza. This chamber is inaccessible to the public unless you have special permission from the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, which we obtained during the recent Land of Chem 2024 Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour for a private entry into all three chambers at night. And stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, because I have a second tour coming up later this year. Official announcement coming out soon. And if you are interested in the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing physics and chemistry and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support this channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. Please check out The Land of Chem members only channel and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there in Egypt Eats for Food Reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that's it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder that one of the most significant research projects that I have ever produced is now available exclusively on the members only channel, episode nine, the function of the Osiris shaft featuring an explanation of the function of this underground chamber system almost 100 feet below the Giza Plateau, and some new, never-before-seen footage from a recent private special permission entry into this site. So if you want access to this type of exclusive research and unreleased footage, come join us on the dark side at the Land of Chem members-only channel link in the video description below. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. To begin, the following images come from the paper. Synthetic aperture radar Doppler tomography reveals details of undiscovered high resolution internal structure of the Great Pyramid of Giza, which was presented back in episode 60. And I'll put a link to that episode in the video description below if you wanna hear my full discussion on the results. But I wanna show a few things today to preface this footage that you are about to see. Specifically, the confirmation of the reflux shaft here in gray that allows the contact process chamber to be drained back into the subterranean chamber during the water lowering process that draws air into the sulfur furnace as explained in episode 80 and the extraction shaft shown here in blue that was utilized to remove the sulfuric acid product from the internal reaction chambers. And if you're new to the channel, I have a full playlist covering all of the episodes regarding the function of the Great Pyramid if you wanna get brought up to speed. And here are some images of the Doppler radar scanning results here on the left, overlaid on top of a diagram of the Great Pyramid, showing the reflux shaft here on the left, and then also highlighted here on the right in red. And another set here. First on the left, a 3D diagram developed by the authors of the paper from the results showing the extraction shaft and what looked to possibly be some intermediary storage chamber, specifically this one here at tag number 15 shown in black. And the extraction shaft, again here in blue, at tag number 16 on the diagram. And over here on the right, the corresponding features from the actual scan results. Here, 
Again, showing that intermediary storage chamber at tag number 15. And tag number 16, showing that extraction shaft leading from the queen's chamber into the intermediary storage chamber. And you can see here below tag number 15 that it does appear like the extraction system continues further out of the structure, exactly as proposed in my book and here on the channel. So now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I hope that you enjoy Sunday Site Visit 54 during a private special permission access from inside of the quote unquote Queen's Chamber. With rubble on the right side, on the way down, comes all the way up through the bedrock into this area here. Correct, connecting directly into the Grand Gallery. And this is your first glimpse at the Grand Gallery of the Great Pyramid. So the area that we're about to enter is what's known as the Queen's Chamber. Shelves. You can also see here that on the right, they're building new lighting. So here are the areas where they did the drilling. These two iron pieces, they drilled into the bedrock here. Sulfate salt. 
that was mechanically removed from all of the walls. It looks like it goes up to 45 degrees. So there's a number of things to talk about in this chamber, and we can start over here since the shafts have caught people's attention. So this is what's known as the northern shaft of the Queen's Chamber, and this is the one where they sent in the robot for the yeah. Captain Brinks door exploration. And this shaft does not go all the way to the outside of the pyramid, nor did it ever open up into this chamber. It was sealed, which is another huge issue with Christopher Dunn's theory, is he proposes that there were fluids flowing through these shafts into this chamber, which is literally impossible given the original configuration, because this was sealed with stone. Yeah. You can see here that they had to break through the stone in the wall, and the reason is because they found a crack. See this crack right here? Uh -huh. They saw a crack leading down through this area, which gave them the idea that there may be something behind here. So they knocked out all of this stone to find this shaft. Same thing on the other side. The shaft does not go all the way to the outside of the pyramid, nor did it ever open up to the inside. So what were those shafts for then? So they were most likely remnants of the construction process. Uh -huh. That there was a function for these shafts while the chamber was still being erected, mm -hmm. possibly for moving blocks or moving things using these shafts to access on the inside. I see. Maybe sort of rails. Rails, yeah. So, next thing we'll look at is the floor inside of this chamber. And it looks like this whole area back here had been removed. You see all those chisel marks in this whole area? Looks like it may have been popped up. Under all these planks, you can see another huge depression in the floor over here. Mm -hmm. All right. Like something was removed from this area. And the area where Joel is currently standing. So these are the original flooring blocks of the chamber. These are modern blocks that were added on top of a hole that was excavated through here by Perry. And they excavated a hole down into this area below the niche. And by many ancient archeologists, it is reported that chambers were found underneath this hole. Shafts and chambers Another below one. the Queen's Pyramid very prolifically discussed in the ancient archaeological record. But this must be, this below one is above the subterranean chamber. Correct. Oh. And the recent 3D Doppler scanning of the Great Pyramid has corroborated the shafts and chambers below the Steve. Queen's chamber. Steve. You're blasting yeah. the flashlight. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. <laughs> uh, it shows these chambers. And I believe that this was the extraction shaft that was used to remove the sulfuric acid product from the structure. Mm -hmm. And it went into the subterranean shaft and chamber system below here to a series of collection tanks that then distributed the solution across the Giza Plateau. Mm -hmm. And we'll see tomorrow a few areas where that sulfuric acid was being directed. This back here in the niche is also an excavated tunnel, not an original part of the structure. There's a huge tunnel that goes back in this way that was excavated in the original exploration of the Queen's Chamber. So then the original wall would have been from Flat. the top straight all the way Flat, right here, yep. Uh -huh. Why did they ex excavate this specifically? So again, they were searching for the burial, yeah. mm -hmm. the burial of Khufu. Okay. And they were also searching for any treasures that they could find. Okay. So I'm certain that there was something about the wall here that was compelling enough, cracks for example, like the crack they found over here, they said, oh, there's a crack in the wall here. Let's check this out, excavate into this area and see what's behind here. So there had to be something compelling 
But you can see here, there's a huge patch as well down here at the bottom of this. You mean like land? Here, yeah, this round area, yeah. Mm -hmm. But this stone on the top is original, right? So maybe they just did something in this shape. It's hard to say, but all I can say is that that's a patch area right here, yeah. yeah. Well, so we're basically standing on top of a pit that led down and out of the Queen's Chamber. Mm. Now you'll notice that this niche has a tiered vault similar to what we saw in the Red Pyramid mm -hmm. and what was originally inside of the Red Pyramid. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult to say with all of the staining and restoration, like this is restoration, this is restoration, and these modern pieces here are all restoration, this block back here is all restoration. So the discoloration inside this area is very difficult to pinpoint in terms of what time in history did that happen. Mm -hmm. But you'll also see that there's holes yeah. here. That you can see the chisel marks down in this hole. There's another one over here. There's another one over in this corner. And I've never seen below any of these boxes, but there's another one over in this corner. So there's several areas where there are holes into the floor. And you can see here this little patch. It looks to me like this entire side of the chamber here was dug up. Yep. And this is all equipment from the recent scanning project. Oh, uh, yeah, this is the equipment we talked about. Yep. And so some of this stuff is lighting, you know, these boxes. They're putting in new conduits for lighting, most likely for some air input as well. What about that big hole there? The big hole, yeah. So again, another excavation where there was most likely something up there. And you can see that there's patch here. This is all patched up where my finger is pointing in the shadow here. And if you look around, there's patches all in through here. Patch here, patch, 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 patch. Huge patch here. So what was here as well? You can see this entire area here was chiseled out, yeah, this area was removed. Something here, this is a patch, this is a big patch in here. Mm -hmm. And just a quick announcement, new Land of Chem merch is now available. I just dropped the Nano Gold fifth degree logo on a black t-shirt and hoodie. And I'm very excited to present the new spectacular white horse logo on a black hoodie and the premium high definition extra large white horse logo on this exceptional quality black t-shirt. And once again, thank you so much to friend and supporter of the channel, Adam Arrington from New Zealand for collaborating with me on this new logo design. He has done some amazing work in helping me bring my ideas for the Land of Chem logos to life. And if you want to check out more of his work, I'll put a link to his Instagram in the video description below. The Egyptian Blue version of the Land of Chem book and the last 30 or so of the signed first edition purple orchid paper print are still available. So if you want to show some love, just check out thelandofchem.com. And thank you all so much for the support. Like this one doesn't have the same color as the other one. The other one is more dark. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that may also be because of equipment and other stuff that was put in here. So that looks like soot. Yep. That black stuff. Yep. Yeah, that definitely looks like soot. Hmm. But it doesn't feel, it feels so industrious. This chamber? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. 
Does it smell as bad as the subterranean one? Yeah. Yeah, it's so crazy that it's burning chain in the right side. Does it smell like that? Open into a lot of air. You won't, you won't bury your grandmother here. <laughs> right, yeah. They got a, a square scratch into the ceiling. Yeah. Yep. And that's most likely our ancient graffiti. Yeah. And unfortunately, you find that in so many of these structures where the original explorers wrote their names on the walls. Right. And even Cuckoo's name on the wall. <laughs> yeah. The red ochre graffiti yeah. that was found in the upper recesses of the, they call them the leaving chambers above the king's chamber. Mm -hmm. There's one right there that you were just talking about. Oh yeah, more graffiti here. Yeah, this oh, looks yeah. like, uh, it looks like Arabic. So that's most likely relatively modern. It, it, by relatively modern, I can say anywhere from the late 1800s to the recent time, yeah. But so my first impression in coming in this chamber was first, there's a lot more patchwork in here than I had expected. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of holes inside of this chamber. What are the holes yeah, from? Everybody has been drilling. In. Possible for intentional disruption yeah. or destruction of the chamber in an attempt to excavate for treasures. Yeah. But what if there was failing of the coating? Yeah. And there were the coating, right? So even if in our modern industrial coatings, these things don't last forever. <clears throat> but the Great Pyramid had a very sophisticated mechanism where the operation of the structure itself created the coating within the chamber, okay? So we have a chamber that's made of calcium carbonate limestone. When calcium carbonate limestone reacts with sulfuric acid, it creates a solid layer of calcium sulfate that forms on the wall of the chamber. That calcium sulfate is insoluble and unreactive with dilute sulfuric acid. So it stops the reaction. So it coats and protects the walls from any further corrosion. But if some of it chipped off, a hole could have started to erode, but that hole would have protected itself yeah, again. It's very self-preserving. Very, very self-preserving, correct. Same thing like what we saw with the coating compound of the red pyramid possibly being a self-repairing coating compound that where the material is heated, cracks in the coating compound could have melted back together. Yeah. So let's say these things are getting struck by lightning. There certainly would have been some heat generated in that process. That certainly would have been some magic. Yeah. Shine in the earshot. And they would have thought this, this thing was alive. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was Sunday Site Visit 54. Rare, exclusive footage from inside of the Queen's Chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and in the next episode in the series, I will be investigating the structure that we visited during our recent expedition to explore the structures of ancient Ireland, known as the Hill of Tara. This is an episode you do not want to miss, so if you're interested in the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell, like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section and thelandofchem.com. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, if you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt Eats for Food Reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, Thank you all so much for the support. I think that's it for today's episode. So I will see you next time.
Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.